and we're back. Sorry about that, people. Technical difficulties. Here we are back at, uh, at you know, day seven of, of things. We'll call this part 7B. Um, and the, the good news is now we don't have to wait for clan boss time because it is five minutes past when clan boss should show up. But, of course, I'm on my other count and clan boss still hasn't reset. It's ever happened to any of you where you, you happen to be there right at the reset and uh, you're waiting for the clan boss to reset and it just won't. It just, it just sits there at zero seconds. You're like, come on. Go. And, oh, and there it goes. All right. So I'm going to do my clan boss fight on my main account while this pro progresses because, you know, I'm addicted to this game. And I have to do this on my main account. But also, I'm I'm at full keys. This way, I can just I can just uh, do it. Also, I get to do it instantaneously on this account. So amazing! I'm looking forward to at least being able to get easy to go instantaneously on this account. Hey, look at that! 117. Ultra nightmare. We'll get there on this account one day. That's the uh, that's the idea. And we got a champion, so we we still haven't made it to the challenge thing that we wanted but we can check back to the market anything cool here we got a mystery shard uh i'm i'm kind of dreading the time that an ancient shard shows up down here and we do actually have to clear this stuff out uh you, you, you'll just bear with me for one moment i'm just gonna set up the other clan boss fight just because it's my main account could have done this right before signing in, but you know, you know how it is. How often do you make clients wait or your your own children wait while you're doing something in the game? So we'll go to the clan thing, members, check in. Uh, we want the clan boss. Let's go fight the clan boss right now, which is over here. So easy. We get two chests, we get gauntlets, and we didn't get a shard. That is a shame. But we can at least bring in, say, Gorlos. Um, that's probably the only change. The others look fine. Let's kick it. Full auto on clan boss. And check it out. 132 against Nightmare. 132 million. No problem. I actually have no idea how well that shows up, so it may just be a blur. Um, and if that's the case, then I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to shut this game down, though. I don't want to be distracted. Oh, but you know what? It's good that I looked here. There's a second thing I want to do. Uh, I put this in the notes up top, come to think of it, while we were down. I love Raid. It's This is not just a, a declaration of I, I do love Raid. Even though I also kind of hate raid, uh, but it's a uh, promo code that I believe is still active. Before we left off, I was talking about how Hell Hades was a great resource for uh, when you're looking for really anything. If you're looking for intel on a particular champion, if you're looking for intel on a particular boss, you can use his stages tool. Uh, or their stages to I don't know if you're gonna refer to Hell Hades as a hand, because of course there is the, the the man Hell Hades, but he has a whole team with him, and, and I think it's more of a them. So we'll just go HH Gaming. Um, they have a stages tool that'll allow you to look at any boss at any level and figure out exactly what stats you need to hit accuracy thresholds, speed thresholds, resistance thresholds and so on. So it's handy for, for champions just trying to figure out which champions are worth investing in. The answer is often complicated because it can depend on your account. You might acquire a legendary champion that kind of has a low rating overall, but it might turn out that he's extremely good at Hydra or at uh, Scarab King or some other boss that you just you haven't been able to get that one boss and suddenly you have a champion that's like five stars against that one boss. So then he could totally be worth building. Whereas normally 
Maybe not. Well, this has gone extremely well. I'm wondering if we're going to manage to one key this time. We're so close. We've got the poisons. We got, we got it. I think if we can stay alive for one more round, we might have it. We might have it. Did we get it? I now have to check. I'm not sure if it's if it's 1.15. I think that's the number that I'm that I'm remembering. It's 1.15. So check it out. We could do um, we could do quick battles now. Uh, is there any point to doing a quick battle? I don't know. Maybe we want to try normal and see how much we can do then. I guess Gorlos made all the difference. Gorlos does a lot of damage. I during the the 40 minutes that we were um, away, I actually got the internet back immediately after signing out. By the way, but then I just decided we're gonna wait because I didn't want to have to wait too long, or more importantly, make you guys wait too long before we got to the the clan boss fights. Um, but I was watching a Hell Hades video about Gorlos, the way he can two man. Um, the Sand Devil, along with Mother Cybel. Just, just this really interesting fluke. Gorlos happens to be our first epic on this account. So that's kind of fun. If we happen to pull Mother Cybel, maybe I'll put together that team, and maybe we'll have a Sand Devil team. We can't even... I don't even think we can access Sand Devil yet. But it's also not super important at this point. The important thing is being able to push dungeons. So we'll do that. But with the extra damage we got off Gorlos. Um, so how, how how is this? Is this even on the radar? No, I mean we'd probably it'd probably be a three key as it stands. But hey, we can now instantaneously complete easy. So that just became easy. Uh, I want a slight reminder on the clan quests. We took three, all from basic. Five simultaneous debuffs on the Fire Knight, five simultaneous debuffs on Ice Golem. We might even be able to do that now on level five. It's possible. We probably get rid of her, him, and for debuffs. We could bring him. He's going to be good. Don't really have a lot of options. There really just are not a lot. So maybe we'll just bring her for the support. We'll try once. So why not? We're here. It's too bad that we didn't get the Ancient Shard. I was really hoping to just get that last challenge done so we could move on to the next phase. Particularly because I think there's a need to reach level 50 with one of the fives. And we've already done that with Sun Wukong. And at this point, I guess there's a risk that we also do that with Kale if we five-star him now. But I think we also want him five-starred. So, I don't, I don't know if at any point we got above five debuffs. It's certainly possible. But we didn't get it. We did get defense gauntlets, retaliation. That's an intriguing set of gauntlets. But we'll come back when we have a better framework for debuffs, I think. So, let's check back with the challenges. We need one more against the boss, and we can move on to the next area. So campaign, Sewers of Arnok. Let's fight the boss. Once more for good luck. And then we can move on to the next area, where we do more of the same again. It'd 
be nice to see how much more damage we can get out of Kale as a 5 star though. So I am strongly thinking about it. And it's a shard. Come on game. Give us what we need. Give us what we need game. We could look for Diabolus, but you know what? At the end of the day today, I think I still want to, to keep looking at, at War Maidens. There is something I've been neglecting, actually. Oh my god. The RNG. Unbelievable. The, the thing we've been neglecting is the Dark Elf faction in Faction Wars. I tried to push it as far as we could yesterday, but it occurred to me, on any given day, you should probably just farm whatever level you're at. I do this on my main account. I don't know why I haven't been thinking to do it with this account, but this is because this account clearly needs glyphs. Because even, even a handful of glyphs can really help when, uh, when trying to achieve higher speeds, higher accuracy, upgrade an artifact to level 4, 3 artifacts to level 4, 6 to level 4, 12 to level 4. It's just a whole bunch of upgrade stuffs. So, yeah, we could do that, no problem. We could do that, no problem. Because I, I suspect that we have to get to another area. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. So let's see, what do we have that's new, that uh, that looks really good? We can go to rank and rarity. We have no sixes. We have two fives. So let's take these to four. And these are really good. I mean, if we can balance this to get this on Kale, we can we can up his damage. Or we could put them on Sun Wukong. Maybe they're for Sun Wukong. Come to think of it. We can have Sun Wukong be the hardest hitter. It makes sense. He's got the higher attack stat, probably. He still needs the accuracy, so that was a good substat roll. Um, so we got a few more here. Let's just roll up all the fours that we can. This way we've got some half-decent gear. This is something I'll also do on my main account, where I'll roll things up somewhat, just to see what we've got, just to see what the where the substats land. And it gives you a nice pool of, of artifacts, plus it gets you points whenever there's an artifact event, which I think just ended sadly but we could still do it this this kind of sucks though i don't i don't like the main stat being defense flat um like these two kind of suck i'm inclined to just sell them what about these gauntlets defense percent uh, that's not bad can roll this up to four Honestly, this early in the account, maybe I shouldn't be selling anything. And then there's the stuff that we just got from Ice Golem. If we could get a bunch of sets of Retaliation, that could actually be really strong on somebody like uh, Sun Wukong or on somebody like... I mean, these are defense percent, so it could be really strong on uh, Shield Guard, which is our, our token defense-based champion. Although we also have Veteran, who's also defense-based. Um, but I'm trying to kind of keep a cap on how much stuff we build. All right, well, then, then we're going to the threes. We're really scraping the bottom of the barrel here. So we've got Retaliation Gauntlets at HP. I don't know who these would be good for, but we can roll it up to four. Uh, we could probably even just batch sell all the one stuff, all the one stars. We're probably not going to use those. Unless we want to equip a bunch of really cheap stuff on champions we plan on feeding. 
which does kind of seem like the thing to do early. Hey, this has speed on it. That's fun. You can even isolate for stuff that has a speed subset. Just to try to find some... Some extra speed. Didn't get speed, though. That is unfortunate. How about substats? Speed. Anything? Hey, this has speed on it. Right on this. This is going to roll speed. You know how I know? You know how I know. It's the only thing that's there. Maybe it'll even be a speed six. Hey, look at that. Perfect speed roll. That's really cool. Um, I don't know how many we're missing. We can go back to the challenges and find out. We're missing two. So let's just push this along. So finally, I don't care. Just any any two that we can get to four. Moving at glacial speed here. Um, attack percent? Yeah, why not? So we got it. So now win a three-star weapon from clearing the sewers of Arnok again. We just did that, guys. Three-star. And you got to win three-star on normal? That's terrible. We may even want to just leave it farming on those stages. Because that is going to take forever. I kind of want to don't I kind of want to not do that. That's awful, Plarium. That is an awful quest. I forgot how awful that was. So we go back to the missions. This one is win four critical rate artifacts from clearing the Durham Forest stages on normal. That's pretty straightforward, really. Um, so let's just do it. Battle. We'll go to campaign. We'll go to Durham Forest. And let's just do stage three, since it is slightly better for the sake of um, for the sake of silver. Shields are a little bit better to sell. Don't know why. Don't know if that was intentional. It must have been intentional. It just seems kind of odd that it's shields that are worth the most, because shields are not really the best piece of gear in this game. It's usually the, the, the bottom row. You have the gauntlets, which are where a lot of the damage can come from. And I have not brought the right companions. Although, hey, look. Okay, I did need to do that. So we, we, we're now... All we need is to randomly pull a rare spirit champion. That's all we need now. But we do need that food. So we'll take these three... We do want to do those missions. Um, I said the six-month thing is Shield of the Drunks. But we also want to aim for Arbiter. So maybe acquiring Arbiter is the end of this series. But I don't know. Because I feel like once we get Arbiter, we're, we're going to want to use her. My first playthrough, I got Shill of the Drakes long before I got Arbiter. I think Arbiter was maybe at nine months. But I'm not even sure I'm remembering correctly anymore, because this is years ago. I've been playing this game for years, guys. And what have I learned in all those years? Well, I've learned that there's probably better uses of my time in this game. It's probably better for you. And I do apologize that I that I keep drawing attention to how um how problematic of an addiction this game is. But I think it's more important to recognize that and just and just kind of laugh about it. I mean, we all have silly um, hobbies, one way or another. Whatever your hobbies are, they're silly. Maybe you are uh, into reading young adult fiction, but you are a 40-year-old woman. It's silly. 
embrace the silliness. Uh, young adult fantasy novels are ridiculous. Why do you have multiple warring factions that all kind of want this one teenage girl to solve the world's problems? You were a teenager. Maybe you have a teenager by this point. Teenagers suck. Teenagers are dumb. They can't solve their own problems, let alone the world's problems. They can't even regulate their own emotions. Heck, they can't even function without getting 12 hours of sleep. So that's one. I don't know what I'm ranting about today, people. This is just, this is more random commentary from the peanut gallery. The point, the point I'm trying to make, I guess, is regardless of who you are and regardless, regardless of what your hobbies are, they are silly. You know, maybe you like to watch the, uh, you know, that cooking show where people go, nailed it, even though they clearly didn't nail it. I don't get it. I don't get it, people. Like, why is that fun? Why is failing at stuff fun? Of course, then again, some of my favorite comments here are, are from you going, you know, Gavin, it's amusing how frequently you, you break your concentration and make a dumb mistake. To which I say thank you. It's... If I can't, if I can't live as as a, as an avatar, as as somebody that inspires you to be just like me, at least I can become the example uh, that makes mistakes that you learn from. I'll take it. I'll take what I can get. I really hate this. I th I, <laughs> I think I need to take a break from the from the farming. Um, just because it is, it is dull. There's a good reason why you want to do the farming while you're asleep, or at least while you're doing something else. It would be nice to just get through this one mission and be able to keep pushing the missions. Because we can get another... We can get another shard somehow in the missions at some point. We've got to do one more. Then we can win some potions. Just three. We can do that, no problem. And then, oh, look at this. Win gauntlets with attack percent from Sewers of Arnok. So we may as well push to this first. Because they were going to make us do that anyway. So let's go back. We'll get one more set of uh, shields. Or gauntlets or whatever. Hang on. What just happened here? Missions? Durham Forest. Okay, I went to the wrong area. So they want us to do 4-1. I want us to do 4-3. So this is, this is why it pays to kind of check back and forth between the missions and the challenges as well, because often they kind of align, and this is another place where they're aligning. So we're going to push back to the Sewers of Arnok thing, and then we can continue to farm Sewers of Arnok. It might, it might even pay to just leave it farming here tonight. Um, so we could be looking for a Spirit Host. I did say I kind of am not sure we need Spirit Host, but if we get her, we'll probably use her. So win three lesser potions. Let's do it. And to make sure they're lesser potions, let's go to the lesser stages. I think we can even get away with doing some food. So we will take these three again. And just anybody else that needs to level. How about you? We'll take Redeemer. Now, I could check back on the time because I wanted to make sure we're just playing for an hour. I, th I think it's probably already totaled an hour, but I'm going to keep pushing a little longer I until we run out of obvious things that need to be done. Then I'm just going to leave the account farming again. Maybe I'll push at least until um, 
at least until the Sewers of Arnok uh, quest, mission, challenge. I don't know, until they're all aligned so that we're doing them all at the same time. Getting a three-star artifact, though. Yikes, guys. But we'll start with the gauntlets. It said attack percent, right? Like a three-star attack percent gauntlet, that is a tall order. I think we really do have to leave it farming. That could take 50 iterations, 100 iterations, I don't know. Because you need the right substat, and accuracy, attack percent is one of, um, what, eight different things you can get on gauntlets? Because you can get attack percent, you can get flat attack. You can get HP percent, flat HP. Defense percent, flat defense, crit damage, and crit rate. So do I have this right? Is this mission really that unfair? Win gauntlets with attack percent as the primary stat. Oh, it doesn't necessarily have to be three stars. Okay, that's a little better. Phew. So we go to the challenges. We got this. We just need to summon a rare spirit champion. Wouldn't it be nice if we could get there? Um, so from the challenges, artifacts, win three-star weapons. From the missions, win a total of three lesser potions for spirit force, magic, or void potion dungeons. Um, I went to the wrong dungeon. I apologize for that, people. It's like I wasn't reading properly. Uh, what do we need the most? Because we do want spirit uh, potions for various champions. Maybe we need, maybe we need force. Maybe we'll do force. I, I mean, we could even make a point of doing void, just because void is the hardest to come by. It's too bad I can't have a, a setup so that I can just keep track of the team across different areas. But it is what it is. I'll do Void. My thinking is just Void is the hardest dungeon to get to once they start shutting them out. Because there's only one day a week that you can come to the Void dungeons, where you can come to any of the other dungeons for two days a week. We don't need a lot of Void potions yet, but we will. When we get a decent Void champion, we're going to want those Void potions. Plus, I think this dungeon is a little bit faster. Spirit is, uh, Spirit has the healing on. So we got one. So we've pushed this. We've done the clan boss. We do want to do the main faction before we go. We do need to do a lot of arena fights. So that's another thing we could spend some time doing. I still didn't put in the code, did I? Let's do that now. I can't believe it. Shards? Seriously, game? <sighs> so here we go. We're going to go to the promo code section. And we're going to go, I love raid. And we got Preserver. And some other stuff. So, she is a reasonably cool champion. Like, she has... Oh, man, this is about to expire. Let's just grab them so they don't. Um, she has a freeze on her A1. 
if I recall correctly. And you can kind of use that. Uh, well, I don't know. So here's Preserver in all her glory. Um, she has uh, decreased speed. She's got, I guess the freeze is on her A3. It attacks one enemy. I mean... I mean, she's all right. She's nothing to get terribly excited about. Very interesting free champion for them to be giving out with this code. It's just kind of a... Meh, like, you don't know how to feel about the code. So let's go back to the dungeons. We do want to push these missions. So how about... Uh, I don't want to keep switching back and forth. I'm just going to do void. Until we get what we want. And we do want to... We do want to do the Faction Wars dungeon. Just whatever whatever, le whatever level we can reach. We just want to farm some good glyphs. And those glyphs can even help Kale out. Or Sun Wukong. Or whoever. And in fact, th those, those two five-star artifacts that we got... We should put those on Sun Wukong. Just to make sure he's hitting good and hard. I want to see if I can get some good crit rate on Sun Wukong too. So he can really become a main nuker for us. So we need one more potion. We're getting them one at a time. Which is unfortunate. I think you can get three from running it at this level. Maybe I'm mistaken. We just need one more. I want to take a look at the rewards, the daily rewards, to see when we get a bunch of um, regen gear. Come to think of it, is this week the week that we get regen gear? Maybe that's what it is. I think the second week you get... I don't remember what it is. We'll have to check. If this week we get a set of regen gear, we are going to want to build out our... Uh, our party reviver. So this mission's done, this mission's done. So now we can go back to the sewers of Arnok to get an attack percent gauntlet. Uh, hmm. So we go to, to this area. We got the new player awards, the seven. Oh, it's retaliation gear. But somewhere on the login rewards, we get regen. It's day 11. We get four pieces. So I guess it's day 11 that I was talking about. And we get four pieces of Relentless here. Interesting. Interesting stuff. We get more speed here. So this is good to know. Just just take a look at the schedule. Try to get a sense of where you can, you can build out various champions. So day five kind of makes sense you're getting attack because you want to be building out your nuker. Day 11, you want to be building out your best support champ. And by day 17... I guess you want to be building out your speed lead. I'm surprised there's not accuracy gear here because that that would kind of make more sense than the shield stuff, but shield can be handy to have somebody just, just bulky helping your guys survive. So let's head to the Faction Wars area. Dark Elf is open. Uh, Undead is open. I guess today is just a Dark Elf day anyway. So we could try once more to push through here. Got several Dark Elves we could be bringing. Not that it matters. And you know what? We may as well be acquiring levels if we can. I don't... You know what? We'll do it this way. So I'm going to try this one more time. We failed last time, but... We might be stronger. I don't remember offhand if we were already level 40. 
Maybe we we should start with uh, Elhane. She's dangerous. And we get to here. I think I'd like to start with Elhane again. She's probably the most dangerous. Anyone out there start with Elhane? My first game I started with Elhane. I think she's a fantastic champion. So don't be fooled by my starting with Kale. There was a there's a reason I started with Kale, but that doesn't mean I think he's the best champion. Anyway, so there's there's no way. So what I'm thinking is we could do stage four to get maybe some chances at two star glyphs, or we could just do twice as many and get one star glyphs. Particularly if we go at the easiest level. Could even do super raids. How fast can we get through this? Let's find out. So, uh, there was the market bolo for armager. We do have an armager. Did I remember to lock him? This is something I need to do right after we finish in this area. I think think I'm going to leave it farming at this point. Um, it's, it's just kind of a shame to over farm in the sewers of Arnok because I don't really want anything other than completing the mission. It seems kind of like a waste of energy. So how fast do we get through this? We're already at number two. Oof, this is painful to watch. So... We want War Maiden. We want to be able to upgrade our arena team. We want the Drexthar Fragments, which aren't even available yet, because we can't get into Tag Arena. Not that it matters, because Tag Arena is going to be a shit show for us. We are not really going to be able to get much of anywhere. I mean, may maybe we are. Maybe. If we have three really good nukers. Which I think we can. Especially if we can, if we can line up the affinities. We could probably line up, say... We could start building out War Maiden so we finally have a good Force Champion. Because right now we just don't have anybody for the Force Affinity. So I guess that's another case that could be made for War Maiden above Gorlos, is that Gorlos is yet another Spirit Champion. Where's our Force Champions? We need Force Champions. So we've got War Maiden, and we just got Preserver. I don't really know if I'd bother building Preserver. I think she might just be a check -in. Even though she does have an eclectic kit. I mean, that freeze is interesting. It's a good chance to freeze, but it's a single target attack. So, is that something we want? It, in, in PvE, you have the Fire Knight. He's the only boss you really need freeze for. But that's hard Fire Knight. We're not going to be getting there. And I and looking at her kit, she doesn't look like she'd be particularly good at hard fire knight, so I don't really know what you would use preserver for. So that's a question for you guys. If anybody happens to be watching at this exact point of the video, because honestly, this is um there's not really a lot going on here. We're just farming we're we're just farming various um glyphs. Trying to see what glyphs we get. Maybe we'll use them on our best pieces of gear so far. They're just one-star glyphs, though. But it's good to have those because eventually we'll get the advanced quests. And sometimes you need to use glyphs to advance them. And sometimes you don't know where you want to use the glyphs. Uh, did we even get any speed glyphs? It doesn't look like it. We got a precision glyph.
anyway, we should be doing that every day. So uh, I don't know. I'd say don't let me forget. But of course, I'm the only one here. So that's some of the crypt keys. We could go for undead as well, but I don't. I don't know that Grinner is going to do all that well yet. But I want to put Grinner on um, what? What was it? Day eleven. I want to put Grinner in regen on day eleven. So day 11, that's the day. I should probably just put this in the notes. We'll say, uh, where's the reviver one? I'll be sure and, and put it in the right place in the, in the, in the next one. Um, I don't think there's a lot we really need to make sure we do. These are the these are the dailies. We'll just collect all this stuff. Don't leave it on the table. Collect everything from the weeklies. We're a ways out from the monthlies. We're a long way out. Advanced happens at level 35. We've got this uh, daily stuff as well from passes. I don't want to forget this stuff either. There's probably some decent rewards in here. Any shards? Hey, there's a sacred shard at the end of it. I don't know if we're on track to actually get it. Yeah, this is probably where the uh, where the really good gear is. I think that's the first six-star piece. We got a six-star piece, people. That's not bad. Let's have a look at it. So filter, um, it, it don't have to filter that. We can just go with um, rank six. So it's a defense percent. That's interesting. This could be a really good piece for shield guard. I want to put it on him. Or possibly for... Um, for Armager, but you know what? Armager, we probably want to get him in accuracy. But this is going to be really good damage for Shield Guard. Uh, I think currently he's in uh, crit rate gear. The substats kind of suck. Um, yeah, he's in crit rate gear here, basically just so that I could get his crit rate as high as possible. So I got it to 65% simply because of the skills. Because it's this one. He fills his turn meter on each critical hit. So this is important, particularly if you can get the cooldowns, which we, we don't. Um, we do have to make a decision whether we want to we wanna farm the missions or what. I think what I'll do is I think I'm going to leave it farming in the Badlands again. But I might revisit throughout the day and take a couple of runs. So, I mean, we're cheating a little bit, but again, these um, these challenges are kind of terrible. So we got to run until we get a three-star piece. We've got to run this mission until we get an attack percent piece. So I'm going to leave it farming in the Badlands. That's that's my final answer. So is there anything else we need to get done today? This is it's just important. Um, I'm sorry that I'm putting you through this. I feel like I should just know. It's the end of the day. We're doing this. I'm just going to go over the notes one last time. Uh, we want to max the starter as soon as possible. We want to push campaign. Um, there's the market bolo for various things. Uh, the gear reviver, it was number 13. I don't know why I couldn't see that before. Uh, but we'll put day 11. So gear reviver in regen, speed, immortal. Does this get cut off on the screen? It sort of does. I'll fix that later. So this is it, folks. This is really it. Uh, we're at 80. I kind of want to just finish this off by saying um, 
or by getting getting a little more. Let's try for just a couple more pulls. I want to see if we can if we can get lucky and, and pull a rare out of two more sheets. We're at a silver here anyway. Come on, RN Jesus. Why have you forsaken me? So, um, we have a lot of food, though. That's the upside. So, we'll go back to campaign. We could even, we could even try to push here in Durham Forest. But no, I'm going to go back to the Deadlands. I think this is the, this is important. We want more stuff for Shield Guard. We want more stuff for War Maiden. Are there any more multi-battles we could be grabbing? That is the other question. I think there aren't. We're not even going to get a lot of multi-battles out of this, unfortunately. Nope. Nothing. Okay. Let's head back to the campaign. We're going to head back to Area 9, the Deadlands. Three. We're going to multi-battle. Just going to ed edit the queue. And this is how we're going to finish out the, the day. I'm probably going to come back at some point and go after um, those missions just so that we don't have to go through the slow and painful process. I'm going to put threes next on the list just because I want... Uh, I want to be able to build Kale to five as quickly as we can, and we're we're kind of running out of farmable threes, or food threes. So I'm gonna make six of them, fully leveled. May you know what? Here, let's let's unequip him. Let's take War Maiden, because we do want to level our single War Maiden, or maybe we don't. It's actually not important that we level War Maiden. I apologize that I keep that I keep changing my mind on things. You know how it is. We got to make sure we make the right decisions. So we're going to do some of these. It probably doesn't matter by this point. And, you know, we can even toss in Armager. I didn't even remember to... Um, I didn't even remember to lock him. I'll add that to the notes. You know, this way I won't. This this way I, I double up the chance to not forget. This illustrates the importance of having these notes. So on the bolo for armager, we'll just say and lock. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Thanks for joining me on this adventure, and I will see you on the next video. Take care of yourselves.